Welcome to Inspire for Travel. And just in case you're new around here, my name is Wemba Imani. And I trust wherever you're watching from, you're doing good and you're living your best life. Now, I've recently received a question from a subscriber that had asked me, which is the best city in Tanzania for a retiree to live? So this question is what inspired me to do this video today. So I'll be sharing with you um, just some tips and from my observation, which city will be quite good for retirees to live in Tanzania? Stay tuned as we explore some of these cities in Tanzania. Come on. Coming in at number five is none other than the beautiful and amazing city of Dar es Salaam. Now, the question I was asked was, which is the best city in Tanzania for a retiree? Now, that's quite a broad question because it all depends on what your needs are. You may require certain infrastructure. You may require certain medical uh, treatment or stuff like that. Various reasons why you may choose to live in a city. So, it depends on you as a person. That's what I'll start off by saying. Nevertheless, from my observation and from my experience traveling extensively in these various cities in Tanzania, I'll just give uh, my opinion on why I think a particular city will be good for, for you. Now, Dar es Salaam. Now, Dar es Salaam is the economic and commercial city in Tanzania. A lot of business activities is happening there. A lot of developed infrastructure. You know, you'll find a lot of the best private hospitals in Tanzania are located in the city of Dar es Salaam. And of course, the diaspora, depending on what country you're coming from, you will find people from your home country who you can network with and connect with. Now, you may be a person that likes the beach, and in Dar es Salaam, there are a lot of beaches, so you may want to live near a beach instead of living inland, uh, inland Tanzania. So you may prefer the coastal area, and Dar es Salaam is a coastal city. Now, another thing is, in, in case you may want to travel to other countries, you know, neighbor, it could be neighboring countries, or you may travel back to your home country from time to time. You may want to live in a city where there's an international airport. Now, Dar es Salaam, there is the Julius Nerere International Airport. So things like that, you know, as a person who is retired, you'll consider these things when you live in Tanzania or choosing uh, Dar es Salaam as a city to live in Tanzania. Now, for my opinion, uh, some people who I've met who are retired that live in Dar es Salaam, they, they appreciate the fact that they can get a lot of things that they're used to. And when I say that, in, in terms of food stuff, shopping stuff. So in Dar es Salaam, there are various shopping malls, for example, Milmani Shopping Mall. And in there, you can, you can find supermarkets like Shoppers and Game. And, in the, and there, you can get different food stuff from, you know, across the world, things from America, the United Kingdom, and they purchase their things there and they feel happy with that. Okay, They're happy that they can get those things. And at the same time, there are a lot of markets, so they get value for their money, a lot of affordable uh, things, you know, they can buy in the market, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables and different things like that. So th that is something which they appreciate. On the downside, though, for someone who is retired, depending on where you're living in Dar es Salaam, you know, the traffic can be an issue sometimes. There are a lot of traffic jams, especially in the evening. Conge traffic congestion can be a bit headache in Dar es Salaam sometimes. So you will really have to be strategic on where you'll be living. Another thing is, comparing to other cities, Dar es Salaam can be expensive. Now, if you're shopping for things well, local, locally, of course, if you're buying local food stuff, local things, it will be at a reduced cost. But if you're looking to buy things on international, coming from international countries, then it will be more expensive. In fact, there are premium on goods coming from uh, outside Tanzania. So these are some things you will have to think about when you're choosing a city in Tanzania. But nevertheless, Dar es Salaam has some amazing homes and apartments which you can choose from. 
um, especially on the, the coastal side in Bezi and these different areas there near Cocoa Beach. There's some lovely apartments there and it's near to the beach and it's, it's quite developed, paved the roads and everything like that. So that will be a bonus for some people who are retired. So that is the city of Dar es Salaam. Now I'm, I'm keeping it brief. I'm just giving you a little idea of what I think. So Dar es Salaam came in at number five. Coming in at number four is none other than the port city of Tanga. Now, Tanga is around 196 kilometers from the city of Dar es Salaam. So it'll take you around four to five hours drive from the city of Dar es Salaam to Tanga city. Now, in my opinion, in comparison to Dar es Salaam, Tanga is a much more laid back city very much laid back so things like traffic congestion traffic jams you don't have to worry about that at all in city in the city of tanga now in comparison to dar es salaam food stuff is much more cheaper and that's even local food stuff from my experience doing shopping in both of those cities i find um the fruits and vegetables i get a better deal in tanga in comparison to what i get in uh, the city of dar es Salam. Also, in, in, in terms of housing, rent is much more cheaper in the city of Tanga in comparison to Dar es Salaam. And also, you house, if you was to buy a house and even land, it is much at a reduced cost in comparison to the city of Dar es Salaam. So Tanga, it can be quite a, a very affordable city to live for, for someone who is coming back to Tanzania and they would like to retire there. It's a, it's a very affordable city. Now there are different restaurants there as well for to get different foods, you know, local food, Swahili food, things like rice, mishkaki, uh, different meat dishes and stuff like that all can be purchased in those various restaurants in Tanga City. So I really do like it there. It, now, the, the religion of Islam is the predominant religion in coastal Tanzania and you'll find that in a city like Tanga City there are a lot of Muslims living there although you do have uh, Christians that live there you have a Hindu minority that live there and people of other faith also live there as well and it's for the most part very peaceful coexistence between the groups of people despite their religion so that's a quite that's a bonus but for some people in some areas where you may choose to live in Tanga you do hear the call to prayer five times a day. Now, for some people, you, you if you're someone who perhaps may not want to hear that during the day or, you know, you want a place that's very quiet, then you may have to look at areas in Tanga which has perhaps less masjids or less mosque. So, for example, if you head to like the Bombo area and Raskazon area, these are the more upscale areas in Tanga City and there are less um, mosque in those areas in comparison to the other areas in Tanga City. So yeah, it's it's still quite good to live. Now, for some people, you may say, well, it's a coast, coastal city. You may expect to see many different beaches there. Well, that's not the case in Tanga City. Um, if you're looking for more beaches, you'll you have a better chance in Dar es Salaam than Tanga City. Uh, there, however, there is one beach that is there called Raska Zone Beach. Before it was a area like kind of a swamp area with some mango mangrove trees and all of that was cleared away many years ago and sand was brought in and everything like that so it's kind of like a mini beach and it's quite popular with the locals especially on Sundays people go there with their family um, children as well so it's child friendly and it's you know you can get drinks there you can get something to eat there is a seating area there for you to sit down and relax and enjoy the cool sea breeze there so that's something you can do and on top of that you get the chance to interact and network with the local people there so that's amazing that that will be an amazing experience now don't expect international standards like perhaps what you will get in Miami but what you will get is the opportunity to meet some people who are, who are from the area and they, they could be a quite a uh, amazing in terms of showing you around and just for you to make friends with people from the area so that'll be something you'll want to look into when you visit that area or if you choose to live in that area in tanga city 
So in my view of someone who is retired, what you will truly value about Tanga City is the peace and tranquility that it offers. Okay, coming in at number three is none other than the city of Arusha. Jiji la Arusha katika Kiswahili. In the language of Kiswahili, it's known as Jiji la Arusha. Now, Arusha is a north eastern Tanzania. So we've moved from the coastal areas and we've moved to northeastern Tanzania. Now, one of the things you'll notice about Arusha in comparison to the coastal cities we've just discussed, uh, you know, the weather. That's number one, in my opinion, the weather. Now, in Arusha, you can find four, four seasons there. Winter, summer, autumn, and spring can all be found in the city of Arusha. Sometimes it can get really cold at night in Arusha. You'll think that you're in England or something like that. So it can get cold there at night and even early in the morning. So that's a very interesting thing about uh, Arusha. So if you're a person who values that type of climate, then Arusha will be for you. Another thing you will notice about Arusha, farming is an integral part in the economy of that uh, area, of that city in Tanzania. So if you're a person that really likes being around that uh, farm, farm life, you know, farm life environment, that rich and lush vegetation in, in the surroundings, a lot of greenery, a lot of trees, mountains, and things like that, then Arusha will be the place for you. And you can go and visit waterfalls, go on nature trails, and all of that. You will definitely find that in Arusha. Now, another thing is the people are, are used to, a lot of the people in Arusha, I won't say all, but a lot of them are used to interacting with people from different countries. Because after all, Arusha is like a transit point for many tourists coming to Tanzania. If they're going on to Kilimanjaro or if they're climbing Mount Meru, they'll be passing through the city of Arusha. So you'll definitely value the fact that you'll find a lot of people who can speak English in the city of Arusha as well. So for communication and interacting, that'll be some that'll be a benefit for some of you if you're coming from English speaking countries. Another thing I really like about Arusha, it's quite affordable, especially for fruits and vegetables and different things like that. We've just passed through the market there. That, that was the Kilambero market. And there you can get things at a reduced cost. And you can also get uh, fruits and vegetables at wholesale prices as well in the markets of Arusha. But nevertheless, as we're walking right now, as you can see, we're heading towards like the shoppers and that area is a more of an upscale area there. And you can find the supermarket, you'll find um, cash machines, you'll find also different restaurants. I've seen Pizza Hut there, I've seen a Chinese restaurant there, I've seen an Indian restaurant there. So international cuisine, you can get that in Arusha also, as well as indigenous African food. So everything, it's, it's located there in Arusha. It offers you a, a, a bit of both worlds in the city of Arusha. Some things which you may not like in Arusha, perhaps, might be the infrastructure. Dar es Salaam is much more uh, a developed city in comparison to Arusha. So, and, you know, some places you may find that the roads are not paved very well. But then in other areas in Arusha, like you can see on your screen right now, the roads are paved. So it all depends on what your, your, your needs are. If you're very fussy about infrastructure and different things like that, then you may have to look at another city. You may have to look at Dar es Salaam. Okay, and now in comparison to uh, uh, Dar es Salaam, Arusha definitely is more affordable rent, rent, rent wise if you're renting and also if you're looking to perhaps purchase a property and you, you follow, follow the legalities to do so and you get the right advice to do so, most likely it will be much more cheaper in comparison to the city of Dar es Salaam. So that was number three, Arusha. Okay, coming in at number two on our list is none other other than Mbeya City, affectionately known as the Green City, because this has been considered to be the bread and basket city of the country of Tanzania. Many different agricultural produce are grown in this city, from maize to beans, and many varieties of fruits and vegetables are all grown in the city of Mbeya. 
Now you'll find when you visit this place, one of the first things you notice is of course how green it is. So much trees, rich vegetation all surrounds you. It's beautiful. Natural beauty of Mama Africa, as they say, is found in, Tan in Tanzania and in the city of Mbeya. And it has also been called the Scotland of Africa, given the fact that it has some various mountainous uh, regions, mountainous areas in the city of Mbeya. So if you're looking for that kind of environment to be in, then Mbeya will be for you. And when it comes to food, and if you're watching your diet, you're eating certain natural foods and things like that, then Mbeya is the place to be. It's at a very, very affordable rate in comparison to many of the other cities in Tanzania. So that's Mbeya City. And of course, it's much more affordable in terms of rent, and purchasing property in Mbeya city in comparison to even Dar es Salaam and to some extent other cities like Arusha. Now it's not as popular as the other cities we've just done and of course that the diaspora population is not at many in the city of Mbeya. It's way off the beaten path part for many people but nevertheless if you're willing to give it a try if you're willing to really see what it's like and you want to check out the greenery and you really want to know more about it then you can just go there and and, and stay a few days a few weeks just to get a good idea of what it's like in that city now there are hotels which are up to international standards that are located in Mbeya city so you can stay there and really just walk around meet people interact with people and see what it's like. Now, one of the things you will notice when you go in far out cities, you know, like Mbeya and different things, internet can be a problem to some extent. So you will have to, you know, see if you can arrange and get in the best packages you can get from Airtel, for example. You may need to get the wireless connections and different things like that in case internet is very important for you. So that was our number two, Mbeya City. Mbeya City, stand up. Okay, coming in at number one is none other than Mwanza City, located in northwestern Tanzania. Now, Mwanza City is, of course, a lakeside city in Tanzania. So if you really value that type of vibe being near the lake, Lake Victoria, you would really love Mwanza City. And one of the things I like about it, it's certainly a laid back vibe. It really gives me a vibe similar to what I, I find when I visit places like Tanga but it's a bit more busier than Tanga but it's definitely laid back when I was there I didn't ex experience or witness much traffic congestion or traffic jam or anything like that I found the people in Mwanza very much welcoming um, in terms of affordability for places to stay Mwanza is much more affordable to stay than Dar es Salaam especially for places to rent long term and even purchasing a property once you have all the legalities done it's definitely affordable in comparison to the city of Dar es Salaam. Also, if you value a lot of, let's say, fish in your diet, then Mwanza is the place to be because from Lake Victoria there, they have a lot of fish and different things coming from Lake Victoria and it's very much a part of the people's diet in that region. Now, also what I like about Mwanza is of course the shopping mall there in Mwanza certainly amazing rock city mall so if you if you're thinking well where can i get certain things perhaps maybe that you're used to and you want a supermarket vibe then you can find that also in Mwanza and also right near to the shopping mall there there's a nice area where the children could go and enjoy the swimming pool if you have grandkids or anything like that and also for you yourself to just go and relax you might have a beer or if you don't drink alcohol you could have fruit fruit drinks fruit juices and different things like that so it's certainly a beautiful and amazing city and also not too far from Mwanza you can go on to the border and cross over to go to Kenya for example and check out the another lakeside city in that part part of East Africa you know Kisumu is a place you can go and check out and also Mwanza city is a place where 
it can be a good point if you're tra heading on to the Maasai Mara. So definitely it's a beautiful city and certainly a city that you should check out whenever you're, you visit Tanzania. And if you're considering to retire in Tanzania, definitely check out Mwanza City. And it's a cosmopolitan city also. Like right now where we're walking, you, this area here, it's, it has a lot of people from the Indian community, Indian Tanzanians. There's a, they have the Sikh temple there, Hindu temple there. There are also schools there as well. So it's definitely a cause. It gives, give, definitely gives me a cosmopolitan feel when I visit it. Now, in comparison to Dar es Salaam, you wouldn't find much of the, the dar, diaspora um, community in Mwanza, especially maybe say, let's say African Americans or, or different things like that. Not many of them live in Mwanza city, but nevertheless, the people are so friendly and welcoming. You, as time go on, you will fit in just fine in Mwanza. It's the, the, the vibe of the place is so laid back that it's 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 a place that you can easily get adjusted to in time. So yeah, definitely consider Mwanza if you're considering to retire in Tanzania. Now this list I've give is by far not it's by far not the only cities you can settle in, but this is just some of the cities that you can consider for now. And if you really enjoy this content, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know some of the things you would like to know more, perhaps. And maybe if you want me to discuss specific things, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to put out a video about that. And I also have my email and everything like that in the description of this video. So if you have any further questions, please do reach out. My name is Wemba Imani and thank you for watching Inspire for Travel.